Hey, Paisanos, welcome to the Super Media Minute Super Show. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And for this show, we're taking horror, we're taking comedy, yep. and we're reversing them. Heck yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're taking spooky stuff, turning it funny, funny stuff to spooky. Who wants to go first? Oh, um, I can. Okay. I got some good ones. Go or do you it. want to go first, Chris? No, no. Go for yep. it. It's all you. Are you sure? Okay. Okay. I'm just making sure. So... <laughs> I thought about this one like long and hard because I was like, how interesting would this one be? Um, Okay, so you guys obviously know my obsession with Hannibal Lecter and uh, Silence of the Lambs and that whole thing. Great horror, but picture this. A rom-com. Yes. Clarice (laughs) and Hannibal. It's the love story of the century. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that kind of like um, reverse Joker and Harley Quinn, though? Yeah, I would Probably. think so. Yeah, because Harley yeah. Quinn was like uh, the Joker's psychiatrist. Yeah. And then he turned to crazy. And everybody loves that. Yeah. Right? Like, everybody loves that story. For strange so I reasons. feel like Do they? there should be an issue. <laughs> it's one. like it's a super nope. abusive relationship, but. <laughs> it is. But, like, the thing is, people, like, romanticize that relationship because, like, Joker and Harley Quinn are so crazy about each other, right? Like, they do insane things for each other, and it's a completely toxic relationship. But I think, like, underneath, everybody kind of wants a relationship that you know that they're going to have your back no matter what kind of thing. And I think that's what they're kind of representing. Yeah. So I feel like Hannibal and Clarice would be able to be, like, almost like the live-action version. So that's, like, that's part of the reason I thought about that one. I, all I'm picturing is, like, the Friends intro, but it's just, like, Hannibal written. <laughs> Nobody told you life was supposed to be this way. <laughs> that's yeah, a, that's a... We're out of fava beans. That'd be, like, a, like that could be, like, a whole thing, too, right? Like, I don't know. I think it'd be fun. On this morning. <laughs> you, Chris, oh, don't you expect concerned. a response. <laughs> no, it's... I'm just you waiting. Have... No, no. I'm just, I'm just waiting. Yeah. Just waiting. Okay. That's all. What, what do you mean you're waiting? I'm worried. Yeah. He, he, he's enjoying the, what we're producing, and he doesn't want oh. to interrupt it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay, fair. I'm, just, I'm just letting it happen Let organically. It happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but, like, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Like, do you think that would work, or do you think it would be, like, right, like or, or, am I crazy for thinking that? <laughs> I, I'd like to see a, a smooth version, yeah. I, okay, I, I might get in trouble for... For this, but uh, uh oh, what is it with girls and true crime stories? <laughs> Seriously, I don't know a single female in my life that doesn't just obsess over those like true crime stories on Netflix. Yeah, hey, like it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because the amount of memes I see about that is like ridiculous. I remember somebody posting this, and it was it was a pretty dark one. Oh, was it? But me- it was is like, it a meme? sorry, it's become a meme. Oh, 100 percent. Oh. Damn. 100%. Yeah. Like, somebody was joking because they're like, you know what? It's really weird that, like, women watch true crime because most of the time, like, women are the victims of true crime and, like, that kind of stuff. It's like, it's almost like a cow watching, like, a slaughterhouse and being, like, entertained by it kind of thing. <laughs> I was wow. like, damn. <laughs> I, I don't even but, know how to, like, even approach that. So, well, right? I, I it was wild. Is, I was like, holy crap. But I yeah, guess it's there's definitely some safety a, in knowing that I'm not. The only person asking asking this question. Yeah. Oh no! Like, it's, it's, it's definitely funny. a thing. Yeah. So well, it's thing. yeah. It's it's funny because it's like, I like I watch true crime all the time, obviously, because yes, I'm I 100 percent fit that <laughs> that basicness of watching that kind of stuff. But it, there's something about it that's like oddly like just it, it just makes you think, right? Yeah, it delves into human psychology. I think. Yeah. That's, you don't really see anywhere else, and I guess that is probably morbidly fascinating. To women, I would say so. Yeah, to anyone, I guess. It's just uh, there's more women watching that kind of stuff. That's all. <laughs> it's entertaining. Get a it's, P- it's get a, a PhD and write a thesis. I'm yeah, on I'll, it. I'll, I'll do make, it. <laughs> yeah, I'll make time for that later. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Right now we're um, busy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a, it's a total thing. Like true crime and like women watching it all the time is like 
They're, they, it's kind of ridiculous, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know it was a meme. I thought I was onto something. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. But, like, I appreciate the effort. Uh, swing and a miss, but I yeah, suppose. So, yep. It's all good. Chris, you got one? But, uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, then. No, no, go, go, go. No, oh, I was oh, done. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Canadian standoff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can go. Uh, comedy to horror. Yep. I'm gonna go uh, weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> like, yeah. You got two young, you know, corporate. Uh, yeah, you corporate yuppie, dudes. Yuppies, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they just drag around the, their corpse. boss's corpse wh- yep. while evading a hitman. Yep. I'd like to reimagine it as, like, the corpse starts speaking to them, but in their own minds as they descend into madness. Like an Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe, uh, yeah, like, Telltale yeah. Heart type thing? Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. And there is a sequel. I don't know yeah, how you there, make there, a sequel to a, a movie where... I, I've seen it, but I couldn't tell you what it's about. Like, all I remember is that they're, like, instead of in Florida, they're, like, in, on a Caribbean island somewhere. Because it came out four years after the first one. Yeah. And, like... If if we're staying a uh, chronological, in the weekend at Bernie's universe, yeah. yeah, Bernie would be just like goo. And he dances around to uh, like Caribbean music. He, he moves on his own. That's weird. In, in the second one, really? Yeah, in response to music. What? Yep. This is twisted. How? What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's something with voodoo. I think. That makes sense. Yep. It was you actually. You don't mess with voodoo. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. But don't uh, do that. Yeah, you're just playing with fire. Yeah. But uh, uh, it was actually based on a Hindi movie. Oh, yeah? What? Which, which I can't pronounce. I'll throw up the poster right about right about here. There we go. <laughs> yeah. That, that's that's the end of the story. Yeah, no. It was just based on it. Yeah. Yeah, it could definitely be uh, definitely be a horror easily. Yeah, yeah you're dragging sure. a corpse. Yep. Like, for, for personal benefit. Y- using it as a puppet? Yeah. Just flopping around put some sunglasses on him he's fine yeah 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 like that that kind of makes me think of like the more like speaking of like people dragging around corpses which is a weird segue but um, segue (laughs) but um swiss army man i was just thinking of that yeah yeah (laughs) because like that like that that's totally what it made me think of so let's put those two movies together yeah for sure and make a swiss army bernie swiss army yeah Interesting. <laughs> Starring Bernie Sanders. I'm picturing it right now. Isn't it? The cr- the crossover you never asked for. <laughs> Again, I'm asking for it. Yeah. All right, I think fair it, enough. That sounds fantastic. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to amend that. Okay. And go from uh, Weekend at Bernie's meets uh, Swiss Army Man. Bernie. Yeah, there we go. Swiss Army Bernie. I like it. Love it. Yeah. All right. Uh, what about you, Mike? Uh, oh, sorry. I don't know if Chris was done. He, he's thinking. Yeah, no, I'm just checking my notes here. Okay. Uh, what, okay. What, what do you want me to do first? Do you want me to do comedy to horror or horror to comedy? Because I got a list. Oh. Surprise. All right. Just roll the dice. Let's do comedy to horror. Harry yeah. and the Hendersons. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That wouldn't be a very long movie. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be, you have, you he have, wakes have, up, it's like, oh, I'm a Sasquatch. Yeah. Time to go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you have a family, just like the, I think it's Pacific Northwest somewhere. I forget where it's like. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, it's, it was on movie, like, Harry and the Hendersons used to be on TV a lot. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Good, like every weekend. But uh, had John Lithgow. And, uh, yeah. But, yeah, just take a take a standard suburban family and. Make, feed them to a Sasquatch. Yes, yeah, feed them to a Sasquatch. There's your horror movie. I yeah. feel like you could, you could add so much to that, though. Like, there's potential. Yeah. Like, you can't just feed him to him. It's like there's got to be a reason why. Like, are you trying to uh, like appease him? Make sure he doesn't like attack the rest of the town. Like, okay, here, there's here so much go, you could put good. Okay, but... opening scene. All right, we got a pitch. Yeah, we yeah, got a pitch going on, yeah, people. This the, might have legs. The Hendersons this might have legs. Hendersons have just left a roll gas station. They're driving to a cabin. Damn, you thought this. Bam! Happened. They hit something. Oh, oh, what is it? It was the Sasquatch's kid. Oh no. Oh sh. And <laughs> now, now Harry it's is safe. out for revenge. <laughs> Coming ju- this July. <laughs> I'm like 90% yeah. sure I've actually seen that Bigfoot movie. Yeah, I'm. I'm I think we. Uh, I, I mean, a movie where like a family hits something is is kind of bog standard. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's but uh, yeah, Harry and the Hendersons is a horror film. Yeah, 
Come on, Bl- come on, Blumhouse. Yeah, they. Sh- oh, oh yeah. Blumhouse. Yeah, yeah you can Hit do me this. Up. You can do this right. I know you can. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody can, it's them. Yeah. I would say. Oh, is that mm. me? Back to you. My next. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Um. So I did a lot more like <laughs> normal stuff to horror, because like I would love to see some of these like cross over into that. Um. This one I never actually thought of until like. I actually found a YouTube channel. It's called Editing is Everything. And all she does, it's actually fantastic. She just takes trailers and, like, re-edits them with different music and, like, different shots and different spots and, like, creates different genres for them. And it's, like, such a cool channel to watch. I actually got, like, totally pulled into it. But the one that she put up that, like, I never would have thought of was Tangled, but horror. Yep. Tangled. Like the Disney film? Yeah. The, yeah, Pixar. It's like the Rapunzel. Yeah. Yep. I was thinking, like, I was sitting there, and I'm like, "Oh my god, genius!" Like, yeah, you got mother, you got mother, mother Gothel. Gothel. Yeah, and she's insane. Yeah, you got someone trapped in like a, a small space, and they're being forced to grow their hair out for some reason. Yeah, like it's it's a really weird story. Yeah, it's it actually is like, and I remember reading like the Grimm's fairy tale one too, and like, dude, <laughs> those are messed. <laughs> like. So, like, I feel like it has the potential. And it's, like, I've seen, like, other movies done where it's, like, um, they take, like, uh, for example, Hansel and Gretel. They made, like, a, almost a horror film out of that, too. Yeah, I remember seeing and, a trailer for that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, Sleeping Beauty. There was one. It's called The C- Curse of Sleeping Beauty. Um, it was more of a B-horror film. But, like, still, though, I was, like, huh. Like, I would have never thought of that kind of thing. So, I feel like Tangled has the potential because, like, Mother Gothel alone is just terrifying and putting that in like live action whoo yeah freaky who would you have play mother gothel Cher. yeah who Cher. yeah share yep share okay yep yeah 100 that, that's like spot on like i i have nothing to respond to that after the yeah after the lavar burton incident i'm afraid to endorse <laughs> any celebrity <laughs> That's fair. But no, like, the reason I sh- say share those, because, like, if you wanted to keep the musical aspect of it, too, like, yeah. perfect voice. She'd be perfect for it. But, like, she also, I don't want to say she looks like Mother Golf, though, but she has that, like, oh, I don't know what to say without sounding like a dick to share. <laughs> I just feel like she'd fit the character just well. Do it. Just, yeah. <laughs> no, say it. Pull, pull the, the trigger. Look. Pull the trigger. What's going on? What's on your mind? Well, because, like, Mother Golf is like a witch, right? Right, so it's like I feel I don't I know. I feel Cher like Cher would woman? embrace it. Like I don't know. I feel like she'd be really good at it. Yep. Heck, Ben Midler did it. So. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. What's that joke about? Like, if uh, all the nukes on Earth were launched, there'd be just cockroaches and Cher left. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> oh, you forgot I, I, Keith Richards and Betty White. Betty White, yeah. Oh yeah, Betty White's gone. Man, like, see. Like, I don't use Twitter that much. Like, I mostly use it for game dev stuff. But, like, yeah. anytime there's, like, a hashtag, like, celebrity name, your mind automatically goes, like, oh, so-and-so is probably dead. <laughs> They're usually totally not, but it's, like, yeah. especially if it's, like, an older actor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's not – I've seen it come up a bit online where uh, people are getting kind of worried. Yeah. That we don't have those universally loved actors much anymore. We don't. Like Betty White's one, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Uh, Keanu. Keanu uh, makes the grade. I guess. Leonardo I feel like DiCaprio, he would be probably. Yeah, Leonardo He'd DiCaprio. Be the yeah. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Actually, a little bit of a sidebar, but speaking of DiCaprio, this, sorry, this just popped into my head. Yep, it's fine. Since we're we're going to be speaking. Actually, I can wait till the actor portion. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll wait till then. I'll bring up Leo again. Okay, okay. moving on. Yep. Sorry, my bad. Uh, well, it's, Terrible it's, it's your turn anyway. <laughs> uh, horror movies. Yeah. Into comedies. Actually, this is, a, actually this, is a, this is a comedy into a horror. But I go, okay. uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yep. <laughs> you got this mad scientist just shrinking his own children, and then they got to fight big Ants. ass like dinosaurs. Not dinosaurs. But dinosaurs. <laughs> what, what kind of what am I talking about? <laughs> Ants. Ants, what would, spiders, what would, spiders. What uh, one did you watch with dinosaurs? I want to see that one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's a. That's not a bad idea. Honey, I shrunk Tammy and the T Rex. Ooh. Oh, that's money. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good idea. Bloomhouse, are you watching? <laughs> 
Yeah, we, if we say Bloomhouse enough, you think the algorithm will just <laughs> redirect our video to them? Is it like is it like Beetlejuice? If you say it enough, it'll just pop up. I don't know. Only one way to find I out. I kind of hope so. Yeah. Like, we gotta keep saying it, guys. <laughs> you know, Bloomhouse, 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 Bloomhouse. But like, <laughs> side note on that, like I like that idea, but I don't know if I could see like Rick Morianis as like a bad guy. You'd, you'd recast him. Like it'd be a no. Like no. you couldn't. No, Rick. Mor- I don't think Rick Moranis is staying in. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. I, I think he's got the chops. Oh, he does uh, for sure. I, yeah, he has the chops, yeah. but I just, just because he's never done it I don't doesn't know. mean he can't. I mm, I don't know. I'd I'd have to see it to believe it. I think Cause like seeing him in a bad guy role, it just it doesn't fit the vibe. I don't vibe with it. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Hmm. Let's go for it. Yeah, because like the unexpected, like Robin Williams played that creepy dude, you know that uh, forty-eight hour photo or whatever. Yeah, was. where he's like a yeah, you know, he works like he develops photos. Like Robin Williams played a creepy, creepy dude. Yeah, which I have not watched because like I can't bring yeah. myself to watch a Robin Williams creepy movie. Like it, I want to see it. It's pretty good, but yeah. like I, I agree with you, Mike. Like I think it's, it would be weird to see him, outside of like the funny, happy, like sentimental guy you know yeah i think that's where like a lot of these actors do their best yeah. I, I think yeah i guess jim, jim carrey's best roles were serious roles i think yeah rain over that's me true. was good or rain on me i can't, can't remember the jim carrey but wasn't that an adam sandler movie? Uh, that was yeah no that was sandler um or uh sandler punch drunk love was punch, really good yeah punch drunk love yeah speaking of- i would say i know people don't like it but 23 i thought he played that well i don't think i've seen that one it was, it was, I don't know. I'm just kind of indifferent to that one. It was decent. Yeah, it's fair. But yeah, like, but speaking of Sandler, too, like, I think actually his best role for me was Uncut Gems. Yeah. That was good. That was incredible. No, that was a good movie, yeah. Sorry, I really got us yeah, off topic. <laughs> oh, no, like, that's fine. So, okay, yeah, I guess, hey, so... I actually, don't know. In, in the original script for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, during the sprinkler scene, there was supposed to have, they were, they were supposed to have a kid die. Oh, yeah? In the script, the original version, at least. Oh. So well, man, that, that was like late like eighties, early nineties. Yeah, like, there was a surprise. Yeah, just kill off a kid. Stuff. Yeah, no big deal. It's but fine. I, I guess the studio probably just like, yeah. nah, I can't. It can't, can't be. Can't do that. Just well to keep the rating, probably. That's, yeah, most likely. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess I'll go horror to comedy. I want okay. to see the version of the fly where a fly turns into Jeff Goldblum. I am a thousand percent it's behind like that. The fly backwards. Yeah. The. Yeah. the I love that. I watch that. Yeah. That's that, that's oh. that's it. Like the a fly turns into Jeff slowly turns into Jeff Goldblum. I mean, you could just watch the Cronenberg one on rewind. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, but That'd like, I feel like that would have so much comedic potential of like a fly trying to learn to be human and just being like, "Yo, what? Yeah, why are you <laughs> spitting on your food? I uh uh uh." I, it, Right? What would you call it? I'm digesting. How do you do it? <laughs> the yeah, <laughs> the unfly. I don't know. <laughs> the refly. Boom. Refly. There you go. There we go. Refly. Hey, <laughs> yeah. I love it. That'd be so good. And I feel like Jeff Goldblum too. Like I feel like he would be able to make it work. Yeah. Speaking of which, he's doing a Dungeons and Dragons podcast now. Is he? I know. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah, he's playing a character. I <laughs> I don't know how it's gonna work. I think it's like... So that's a thing. That's the, yeah, yeah, so that's the thing, yeah. That's coming up like, later. Yeah, like speaking of Jeff Goldblum, though, I feel like that's like another actor that's like well-known and really loved, too. Yeah. Um, but like, have you guys ever seen... I can't remember who did it, but somebody did a video of him reading thirsty tweets. <laughs> <laughs> it imagine. was so good. He was so wholesome about it. He was like, oh my goodness. He's like, you girls shouldn't be saying stuff like this. <laughs> it was so good. He's concerned. Yeah, that's all. He is. He's very thoughtful and concerned yeah. about the nature of the universe. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. He's a, yeah, I think he's one of like those wholesome human beings that like everybody is just like, yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Yep. Yeah. I, I'd throw him into that camp. Have you ever seen yeah. Vibes? It's, Vibes. Yep. It's Jeff Goldblum and Cindy Lauper. Whoa. Yep. They play, That's a they weird play combo. psychics. I have not. Yeah. Seen that. Uh, it's, it's definitely like late 80s, early 90s. But that, uh, well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the guy who plays Columbo was in it. Ooh. Oh, Interesting. Yeah, who was? was uh, yeah, he was like the grandfather in Princess Bride. That guy. Nice. Oh, yay! Yeah, I love that guy. Oh, c- can I just interject for a second? Sure. Um, before we move on, there was a Honey I Shrunk the Kids TV show. Yep. Which I didn't know about. And there was and a movie. 
Uh, yeah, well, there's a couple. Yeah. But the dog in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids name was Quark. <laughs> you know where I'm going Yeah, I this. do, yeah. <laughs> Who was the there bartender in Deep Space Nine? It's been a minute, but I found one. Yeah, All right. Okay. Just had to get that out of my he system. did it, folks. We got it. I actually, I might, I might even have two this episode. Ooh. Well done. I, I'm I, impressed. I might be able to squeeze one in. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. No pressure. Yeah. But if it happens naturally, I, it's yeah. all good. I, I leave the Deep Space Nine references to you two because <laughs> <Yeah>. I <laughs> don't know. <laughs> yeah, we got to get get you caught up on that for sure. Yeah. I think yeah, we're apparently. back to uh, you, Rachel. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Um, this one I never thought of as like a horror, but like it would work so well. But the thing is, like the main actor, I don't know if he can do horror because I've never seen him in anything like that, and that's like my only concern. But um, imagine Elf as like a thriller horror movie. <laughs> Elf. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Because like, think about it. He got like it's basically so, it baby just, snatched. My brain automatically goes to uh, Leprechaun movies. Yeah, same. Right. Yeah, with the uh, uh, Warwick Davis. Is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I could see Actually, Will he's Ferrell. He's another a good one. Movie? Yeah. I can't see him being creepy because no. he's been in so oh, many. Yeah. Like, he's been yeah. in like. Hold on a second. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He, he can do dramatic roles. I know that. Yeah. Um, Danny. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, what okay? What's he been in that's been dramatic? Because I've only seen like like Step Brothers. No, nope, sorry. What's that movie where he thinks he's in a book? Yeah. Oh, um. Um. Can't remember. Yeah. I could. Just I know. I know what one that is, but I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. There's also like, everything. Was that? Everything. Was that a dramatic? Yeah, that was dramatic. And also, everything must go. Yep. I haven't. I haven't seen yeah, that one. Like he's he plays a fantastic sad man. Oh, yeah, most comedians do a really good job of playing serious roles. Like, yeah. Comedy is harder than just being a straight up. It I is. mean, I'm not, I'm neither of which, no. but from that. I think, <laughs> I'm not saying no, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like no, 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 it's like, no, like, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I'm agreeing You're just here it. to set up the cameras and throw in some graphics afterwards. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I finally, yeah, like Jim Carrey, Will Ferrell, um, who else? Adam Sandler. Yeah. A lot of comedians, like when they go into dramatic roles, they usually crush it. Yeah. I find well, like, that's the thing, though, is, like, I've never seen Will Ferrell. Like, cause I don't think that book one is really, like, dramatic. I still, like, got, like, a... I don't know. It didn't feel like... Watch Everything Must Go. Right. Yeah, okay. That's a good one. Yeah. But, yeah. but, yeah, like, part of the reason, like, Elf really, like, interested me is just, like, how would you, like, go about making that movie? Like, did he, like... In the like the thriller horror sense, instead of like the whole comedy sense, I mean, sense, you have right? the whole Santa Claus C L A W S <laughs> series. Yeah, of movies, so <laughs> that's true. Well, it's like it'd be kind of interesting too. It's like instead of like him going to New York to like find his family, it's like and like the like everybody being cool with it. It's like what if like I guess Papa Elf or something was like, yo, we need to find him or else he's gonna expose the North Pole and like everybody like went after him kind of thing. So it's like it'd be interesting. Yeah. It's almost like Elf meets Taken. Yeah. Yes. Liam Neeson. There we go. That, that's my elevator pitch. <laughs> yeah. Can Liam Neeson play Santa Claus, though? Because, like, that would be dope. Yeah, it's not actually elves. Bloomhouse, it's we're it's looking at a, you. It's just a cult that believes that they're elves. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. Santa's got to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. No, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's mine. Okay. 100%. Chris? Uh, my last one is a short one. It would be uh, the first Saw movie. Yep. But all you do at the end is add the Seinfeld bass line. <laughs> what, after he gets up and walk away? <laughs> yeah. Boom, boom. yeah, that's it. That's, that, that's my pitch. Yep. <laughs> that's so twisted because it would work. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think like, so. That's, that's uncomfortable how well that would work. I don't know if I'm I'm good with that. I'm, oh, I'm I all, mean, we yeah. could make that. Like, we could literally make that. Ooh. <gasps> Okay, my workload just increased, but not that much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's it. That's oh, it. Yeah. Saw, but at the end, you just hear the Seinfeld bass. Actually, speaking of Saw and, like, comedians and stuff, uh, Spiral came out yesterday. Oh, yeah. good. And that has Chris Rock in it, like, playing a serious role. I got to give you props on that segue. That was, a, yeah, that was... That was, that was well done. Thank you. I'm, I'm improving the segues, and I'm very proud. Love it. Club. But... Segway. Yeah. But, like, no, actually, though, like, I thought that would, like, that's an interesting one, too, is, like, Chris Rock is, like, a serious actor. Because I've seen his comedy sketches and stuff. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. 
Yeah, apparently it's not very good. <laughs> yeah. Every, every review I've seen with it kind of, it's like, eh, it's like 20% on Rotten Tomatoes or something like that. Yeah, I haven't been hearing good stuff. Yeah. About I'm, that one. Honestly, I'm, I'm probably going to watch it purely for the fact that Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson's in it. Yeah. Who? Like, I love watching his stuff. Here's my controversial take. Uh-oh. Hot take. Oh, yeah. I'm hot not, take. I'm not 100% convinced that Samuel L. Jackson is a good actor. I believe he, he carries his career on his charisma alone. I'd say you have a point. Ah, uh, I don't know. I feel like he's well, like had to such really good roles. Sometimes, like <laughs> yeah. I, I do love the fact though that his uh, part of the reason he says mf -er so much is because he has a speech impediment, and that's how he learned to yeah. get through it. Was instead of like stuttering, he would say "mother." Really? Yeah. I didn't yeah, hundred percent. He had like, yeah. Don't, don't make get, me, get me wrong. He has a terrific sp screen presence and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but pure acting chops? Yeah, I, I do understand what you're saying. Yeah. Like, he's not... I, he ain't, I think he ain't he, no Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah. I don't know. I think he's underrated. I think he's been, like, put in such, like, similar roles his entire career that it's hard for people to look at him as, like a, like, a... as, like, an actor who could do more, right? Like, I feel like if people gave him a shot in, like, say, more of, like, a dramatic role i feel like you'd nail it yeah i totally think so i think he's above the rock as what in terms of acting ability oh i oh, was like what uh, yeah <laughs> yeah because the rock just plays the rock and everything he does well you could say that with kevin hart too actually there's another really good movie coming out it's called fatherhood Kevin Hart starring in it, and it's about, um, it's based on a true story, and it's about a single father learning to take care of his daughter after his wife passes away. And it's like, it goes through her entire life kind of thing with him kind of learning how to be a dad on his own. Looks really good, surprisingly, because, like, I could never, again, Kevin Hart, like, I can't think of him in a serious role. Yeah. Again, I'm just, we're, uh, yeah, going we're full circle. Like, we're going comedians to, we're, put him in yeah. dramatic roles. They usually nail it. They do. They do. I know. But, like, it's just, I think, like, the first initial, like, when you see the trailer and stuff, it's like, you're like, what? Really? Like, the funny guy? And then it's like, when you watch it, you're just like, this makes sense. Like, I don't know. It's just like, I, I feel like for me, it's like watching the trailer and seeing a comedian in, like, a serious role at first. I'm just like, yeah, that doesn't that make sense work? at all. Yeah. But then you watch I, it and you're yeah. like, oh, I, I was the, wrong. <laughs> I usually have the opposite reaction. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's okay. Um, I guess I'll. Go. Yeah, I think it's your turn, man. Yeah, 100%. Uh, let's sorry. Do <laughs> big comedy to horror. You got a kid who's suddenly thrust in the body of an adult. That sentence alone is going to get us demonetized. Just saying. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, shit. It's not like we're monetized anyway, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not yet. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, yeah, that's actually like a really good concept. Yeah, I totally, don't, uh, don't yeah. like put him as like the head designer in a toy company. You'll just like throw him out into the real world. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I think you got something there, Mike. Yeah. Hmm. Blue Mouse. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think he'd have Tom Hanks again, but. I don't know. Well, I think not Tom if it was Hanks made did... today. Yeah. Yeah, like if it, yeah, like if it it'd be made... like boy to grandfather. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I know. Who would you cast as that then? Like if that if if like obviously if it was being created right now, like who would be the person that you're like? They can play the role perfectly. Nicholas Cage. Yes. <laughs> Correct. Obvious answer. <laughs> Someone who could play childlike wonder, but yeah, has you know, crazy it, at the same you know, time. Still has that innocence yeah. about him. I totally got one for you, and it's. I guess uh, this is my connection to M. Night Shyamalan today, but James McAvoy. Yeah. I feel like he would do a really good job because, like, he played um, Kevin Crumb, who was, like, the guy who had the multiple um, personalities, and one of them was, like, a 10-year-old boy named Hedwig, and he played that character incredibly. Yep. So, like, I feel like that would be a good one, like, good contender. Hmm. Yep. It's, I can yeah, see yeah, the it's just awful pretty. one. Like it's, I'm trying to think. Like, like, uh, yeah. I mean, that's the scenario, though. It's like a kid that's suddenly an adult and suddenly faced with adult problems. Like he's yeah. got to worry about mortgages and <laughs> taxes. and <laughs> Just surviving, basically. Rickets. That's actually terrifying, though. Yeah. 
Like, that's something nobody ever prepares you for. Really. Nope. Losing, like, 40 years of your life in the blink of an eye. Pretty much. My God. Yeah. Could you imagine? It's kind of a body horror aspect to it, too, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to mm-hmm. see if Cronenberg wants in on that. Yep. He's a big body horror yep. dude. Yeah, he is. Yep. Rachel, do you have uh, anything else? Another one? I have one that I think I disagree with that I've seen a lot of. Yep. Um, so like everybody knows like, um, Midsummer, right? It's like that horror film. Yeah. Like it's, it's super violent, like just crazy. Is it? Somebody was like, could you get, yeah, it is, it's got some pretty crazy gore to it, but like somebody was like, make it a Disney film. And I was like, how? <laughs> yeah. It already looks like one. No, but like the storyline and stuff, like. I haven't seen it. So I'm not. Yeah. I, I can't, uh, I haven't seen it. That's either, fair. So. It's, it, there's got, so, it's got some like some body horror some psychological horror and stuff but i feel like if you took any of that away and tried to make it more of like a family friendly film it would make no sense because like basically this girl like loses her entire family to like a terrible tragedy and then ends up going and joining a cult with her boyfriend as one does yep like you know it it wasn't on purpose obviously but she was feeling vulnerable (laughs) she had nobody else and like all that kind of stuff but yeah she like, like i don't know how you could take that and make it more of a disney-esque film you know what i mean yeah oh instead of murder it's a bunch of uh like woodland creatures dressing you in clothing i'm pretty sure that's from snow white yeah <laughs> um cinderella was that cinderella yeah my my yeah. Might, might be snow white as well i know disney was huge on the woodland creatures yeah it's like hey some birds are gonna throw a couple scarves on you yeah, yeah. So yeah, Cinderella, the it was the creatures, like, dressing her, and Snow White, they were helping her clean the dwarf's house. Okay. They're really, Actually, they're there's, really a, there's a horror... Yeah. Why can't we there have birds go. like that? Yeah. All right, we have to be a Disney come, princess first, on, I think. Come it's on, like magpies. Yeah. Get your act together. <laughs> we need your help. You can do better, crows. <laughs> there's enough deer around. They can, like, push us, like, a broom around, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Chris, you got any other uh, conversions? I don't think I do. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, I did a list. I was, oh, oh, you got. Uh, I was, I was ready for this one. Yeah. See. I'm, oh. Uh, oh. Um. Short circuit. Yes. It's as a horror. Yeah. Yeah. You have a robot. Rob- robot gets struck by lightning and gains sentience. Yeah. yeah. There's, I, I, he's I, even armed with okay. lasers. It, it is a war robot. Yeah, like, like, it's literally like a combat drone. You flick a switch, and that thing just goes haywire. Yeah. It's got a laser that can melt through things. Yeah, it's like a shoulder mount, like kind of like the Predator. Yeah. So yeah, short That's circuit. Fair. Johnny Five could have just tore that yeah. place apart if he wanted to. Johnny Five's gonna make you unalive. Yeah, there you go. So yeah. <laughs> that's it that's 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 I the think, pitch i think we're coming up oh. with bangers here and i oh, think somebody needs to write these down oh yeah and batteries not included yeah yeah that would be just because they're not only alien sentient robots. robots yeah but they're aliens too so they know nothing of like a our, weird of our customs yep yeah they, they don't even know like the concept of organic life so they just start converting the planet yeah Ooh, just that'd be good turning us into a biofuel or something yeah yeah. Those evil right, but... little adorable robots. <laughs> Damn you adorable robots. <laughs> yeah, they get you every time. They're sneaky. All right. That's have how you, they get you. Have you ever uh, read about the concept of, like, the biblical angels, like, the, how angels are described in the Bible? Because they're horrifying. They're like that. wheels within wheels, but there's, like, dozens of eyes and stuff like that. They're They're terrifying. Like, people are terrified. Of angels in the Bible because they're they're actually horrific looking. Why do they have so many eyes? I don't know, but I want like, a, so they can fly see, or they can see like, Yeah, I want angels in the outfield with those angels. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm down. Yeah, but seriously, look look up a picture of a biblical angel. It's like freaky. <laughs> well, it's like um, I'll, I'll put one right here. Hold yeah. On. Did you ever like watch? Uh, the Paul because there was a Paul a Paul Bettany year where he was just like pulling out like movies like all over the place and they were like insane <coughs> movies <laughs> and um, there was one called Legion. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, like I, I don't know why that, that made Paul me think Bettany? of that, but sorry, that was Paul Bettany, was it? Yeah, it was. Wow. <laughs> like I, yeah. I think I remember seeing it, but like I, yeah, I remember nothing about it. I have yeah. a lot of those. That's why I ended up watching Ghost Ship. Yeah, Ghost Ship. <laughs> 
Well, no, like actually, it's I, it's we'll definitely see. a good movie. It's a it's a fun watch, and it has um, oh, what's his name? Doug Jones in it. He plays one of the creatures. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, yeah. Doug jo- the creatures that Doug Jones play, <laughs> like that. That's that's more akin to like a biblical angel. Oh, it totally is. Yeah. Like it, it's like the the angels they obviously made human, but they like they played on the fact that angels weren't these like. Yeah, they're messengers not, not like, like they weren't dude good with people. Wings. It's like a horrifying creature that mortals can't understand. Yeah, so it's like they have to possess people. Yeah. To like do that, right? So it's like they do that, and it's really interesting, like the way that they play on that, because like I feel like the if I'm not mistaken, like the Christian community was not very stoked on that because it's like obviously they don't want angels to be portrayed a certain way, like in media they want it to be like these holy beings but and stuff. So when it, they did this whole thing where it's like. They were warriors and, like, willing to kill humans, like, within seconds of, like, given orders kind of thing. It was it was really interesting. But I, I do think the Catholic community was very upset about it. Yeah. I mean, but if yeah. it's if it's in the book. Yeah. This, why do you think angels have to keep telling people not to be afraid? Because they're spooky. <laughs> That's the real reason. They're not <laughs> saying it to calm you down. No. It's, yeah. well, it's I, more like, yo, I know I'm terrifying, yeah. but it's okay. You're yeah. covered yeah. in blood. You're holding a head. Yeah. I... This is hard to read for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, one more I got. Uh, oh, this one's hard to comp. It, it, did everyone go through, through the other stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Rachel? I think. I thought of another one, but you go ahead, Mike. Okay. Uh, I'd like to see a, a comedy pet cemetery. Nice. <laughs> Rovers back from the dead. <laughs> I feel like that would work so well, especially because I don't know about you guys, but Stephen King movies are freaking terrible. Like, there's only, like, a handful, I think, that are actually good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're mostly myths, I think, probably. Like, I, I think why like, Stephen King works so much is, like, your own imagination when you're reading. Yeah, but absolutely. But, like, sorry, yeah. sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, uh, but when the when the pets come back, or whatever you bury in the uh, yeah. cemetery, they come back as Muppets. Yeah. Oh, my God, Do yeah. It. There we go. You messed up, Boom. Muppets. Yeah. Jim Hansen's <laughs> Pet <yeah>. Cemetery. <laughs> I would watch that 100%. Yeah. I totally would. Oh, here, here's the Deep Space Nine. Oh. Uh, so oh. Pet Cemetery, I think, had Denise Crosby, who played Tasha Yar in uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, who was the security officer. And after she died, Worf took over her position. And of course, <laughs> Worf ended up on Deep Space Nine. Bam. Oh. <laughs> it was a long one, but we got there. <laughs> We still got there, though. That's all that matters. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, that'd be an interesting one. Yep. Uh, cool. Yeah, that's that's, that's it, I think, for my uh, comedy or horror and, and such. All right, I got one more. Okay. And it, kind of, it hit me like a bolt of lightning because I feel like it makes sense to be a horror. Yep. Like, it totally does. And that's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> that's pretty Charlie much the is already. It's like, yeah. It, it's like it, dark it comedy, sense. at least. Yeah. yeah. It's a cautionary tale. It is. Yeah. Well, because it, it's one of those ones where it's like each of the kids possess a trait that, like, is kind of deemed, like, not Un- good. Unworthy, yeah. Right? So it's like that, like, is like a cautionary tale in itself. But I feel like if you were, like, to amp it up just like a smidge, like add a little bit of gore, a little bit of, you know, all that kind of stuff, I feel like it would be really, really terrifying. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. But uh, we'll yeah. move on to our second topic. We're just going to do a little kind of actor highlight. Sure. Yeah. For me, Ooh, okay. I, t- I took Kurt Russell. Uh, All right. I'm just going to highlight some I of his films that people have, may not have seen or maybe his lesser appreciated films. Uh, first is The Computer Wore Tennis Shoes. What? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> it's one of his first movies, The Computer Wore Tennis Shoes. Kurt Russell gets zapped by computer in, like, the 1970s. And, like, when I say computer, I mean, like, the big computers, like the 70 tape oh, units. Yeah. And he Got he, the cards. Yeah, yeah, he basically gains the power of the computer. <laughs> Wild. Okay. Yeah. So if you're looking for, like, a young Kurt Russell <laughs> movie. Involving where he looks, shoes and yeah. computers. Well, this is, this is, he's a slacker college student, basically. And he, he gets huh. super smart. It's like a Flowers for Algernon. Uh, situation, but uh, I like it. Yeah, if you like, I said it's probably when you think Kurt Russell, you probably don't think of that. I definitely do not. Yeah, second movie, Captain Ron. Okay, I saw Captain Ron. Captain Ron with Martin Short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No Very, idea what that is. 
<laughs> you, Not a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm going for like the least or less appreciated movie. Okay, sounds good. Uh, yeah, he plays like a captain of a tourist boat, and he takes his family out, and hijinks ensue. Yeah, yeah. He's got an eye patch. He's got an eye patch. He pretends he's snake. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> that that was Kurt Russell's career in the '90s. Snake goes Hawaiian. Snake, snake goes Hawaiian. Yep. Yeah. And uh, last up is uh, Soldier, in which Kurt Russell stares. That's the entire movie. He just he just stares at things like he's a. It takes place in like the future year of like 2015, and he's like this <laughs> soldier that's been raised from like child to be like a ultra marine or something like that. I think I have. So he's seen like this it. emotionless guy, and all he does is stare. He's got like three lines. <laughs> Hey, if, if your stare is hard enough, that's all you need. Yeah. Yeah, that's all you need. You're like, oh my God. Could, side note, like, the premise stare. of that, that's so sad. Like, being raised, like, military base, like, not, like, basically being human and just being, like, a war machine. Yeah. That's nuts. Uh, what's crazy that? concept. Sorry. <laughs> Speaking of crazy, um, who's that really wild guy? Um, I can't remember his name now. Nick Nolte? No, it's not Nick Nolte. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna have to move on because like uh, the guy's name escapes me. Do you know what? Well, okay, what was he in? Uh, yeah, soldier. <laughs> okay, uh, anything else? Uh, like I'm completely blanking on him now. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up though. All right, yeah, let's other just, people are let's discussing just, things. Let's just pretend we're gonna edit this out. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> um, do you guys okay. have any actors or actresses you like to highlight? Yeah, um, this one was kind of hard for me because. Uh, I'm more of a like director. Yeah, like, like, that's there's, fine. There's not like I, I don't think there's any actors who would just be like convince me to watch a movie if it looks bad. Yeah, like I love Gary Oldman, but if I see that he is in a movie that looks like crap, I'm not gonna go see it just because Gary Oldman's in it. No, for sure. And that goes for most actors. Side note, though, has Gary Oldman ever been in a bad movie? Oh, probably. Uh, the one I don't where know. he pretends to be a little person. Oh, yeah. I forgot, oh, about, I forgot that. about that yeah, one. Okay. Never mind. So there you go. That yeah. was bad. Yeah. Okay. But uh, since I had to pick someone, I'm going to go with Timothy Oliphant. Okay. I would cast that dude in anything. All right. Blanking on who that is. Can you... Uh, do you remember with... the remake of The Crazies? Played the sheriff... He plays a lot of oh. sheriffs, a lot of law enforcement. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Good good choice. I totally forget. Yeah. Damn. He never got a good shake. Yeah. He, there, ah. There's some actors that never quite make it to that, like, A-level. Yeah. He's he's charismatic as hell. Yeah. Like, was good, it, good wasn't he dude. in Pet Cemetery? Like, he was, like, the dad? I can't remember. I don't know. Like, the not, new one? Yeah, like, the remake. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. thought he was. Uh, Gary, Gary Busey, by the way, is the person. Oh, I think okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go. Nice, but uh, yeah, Timmy, Timothy Elephant. He was in a oh, crap. I can't remember the the TV show he was in, but yeah, he typically plays law enforcement or just like a slime ball. Yeah, like uh, the girl next door. Really underrated movie, by the way. Uh, Alicia, Alicia Cuthbert. I, don't know if I know that one. Yeah, uh, Alicia Cuthbert, uh, Emil Hirsch. But like a hmm, okay. Kid falls in love. Well. Yeah, yeah, falls in love with a, a porn star who moved in next door to him. It's actually a really good movie. Way, way underrated. Yeah. I have to check Is that out. made in like the 90s or 2000s? Uh, early 2000s. That makes sense. It, it, yeah, definitely kind of looked like it went American Pie and those type of oh, movies. Oh, okay. But yeah. it's not, okay. it's not, I wouldn't put it in that category, but it was kind of branded that way. Okay. So I mm. think it kind of got just kind of overlooked. It got lumped? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good movie. Nice. Girl Next Door, check it out. If you can find it. Rachel, you got anyone you want to highlight? I had a tough one because there's like a few of them that I thought of that I feel like I don't feel like they get enough of a shake. Um, Now I'm blanking on names. Great timing. <laughs> um, the first one, actually. We're all very that, tired. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, the first, first guy I want to talk about is actually Paul Giamatti. Oh yeah, I think okay. he's a, I think he's a hundred percent underrated. Like, really? I yeah, I don't he, think he, he gets had, like he had a few like really good years where like he was like yeah, in everything, like but, Sideways came yeah. out and then yeah, he had yeah. like a really good um, run. 
that one where yeah, I played did. Like, that comic artist. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, oh, f- that that one was I, good. Yeah. I had yeah. It like. I, yeah. Let me watch that. Tonight. And like, for me personally, like the ones that I remember the most, I think it's because I watched them when I was so young. Was um, obviously Lady in the Water because he's that's my boy M Knight, but he also played a really good character that you really connected with on that like he played the character so beautifully and then also obviously big fat liar yep like yeah, Frank that's, Muniz. that's such a good movie oh wow yeah. i forgot about what? that one it's so good because he like that's the thing i like about him is like he has so much range that i feel like he can like play the character that like you can relate to and like you you know you connect with and like you're you're like wow like this guy's been through some shit and like you know, like, I can relate to that, but he can also play a complete, just terrible person and, yeah. like, make you hate him kind of thing. I think he's really close to being in that category of, like, Sam Jackson or Robin Williams, where it's just, yeah. it's just the person being themselves on camera. Yeah. He's really close but, to like, that. Yeah. But I, I do think he doesn't get, it like, a fair enough shake on that. Like, I think he's an incredible actor, and I really, I do enjoy watching him. I know, like, he's been in a few TV shows. Like, he did, he was with The Rock in Ballers, was one. And the mm. the only movie I can think I've seen him in lately is John Must Die at the End, which is an adaptation of a fantastic book. And he plays a really good character there, too. But, was, like, I can't think of anything Yeah, he, he that's sounded like coming an out? HBO series, wasn't he? Yeah, like, a, like, about a freak show or something like that, or a carnival, or oh, yeah. mm. a boardwalk. I saw or, that one. Mm. But what was it called? Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, like, like he's been in stuff, but I feel like, I don't know. I feel like people like underrate him as an actor, personally. He hasn't, yeah, I can't really picture him in like any upcoming things. I don't think he is. Maybe, I mean, if you make enough during uh, like, if you have like a really good run for a few years, you can just retire as an actor and not do anything. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's true. Yeah, that's the dream, right? Yeah. Well, maybe not. Absolutely. Right, well, I'm going to bring up Leonardo DiCaprio because I referenced there it we go. earlier yeah. in the uh, show. Sure. But uh, no, yeah, no, I'm not saying he does get a fair shake. I just wanted to bring up a, a story about Titanic. Okay. I, I saw it in the theater yep. in Ajax, Ontario, a couple of friends, and it was amazing. Not because of the movie. I mean, the movie was probably good. I don't know. Yeah. Because I could barely pay attention because... I had two women in the row in front of me for the whole movie. And, and it's, it's a long movie. It ain't, yeah, it's, it's like two and a half hours. It came out on two Something VHSs like when, back in the day. Yeah, for the whole movie. Like as soon as the credits started rolling, all they talked about was how hot they thought Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. was. They were thirsty. Through the entire movie. Yeah. Even when he wasn't on camera. Like, if he wasn't on screen, they'd still be like, hey, remember when uh, Leo was looking hot and like all wet? Yeah. Like there was a couple That's amazing. There was a couple awkward parts where like they got a little too um eager. Oh boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, they made the movie. The, yeah. So That's awesome. I haven't I got Your like, your experience in watching Titanic was entertaining. Oh, it was yes. it was fantastic. I got free I got a free uh, audio uh, commentary free commentary from some extremely thirsty women. Yeah, I love and it that. was amazing. Yeah. That's all. That's, I, love I just that. wanted to bring that up. Yep. Cuz it was fun. I, just like, ooh, I, 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 okay. I was going to give examples of stuff they said, but I forgot. Oh, it, this is going on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, you have, you look like you have Andrew Jack. I totally, it, it hit me again of uh, who the other person was. And like, again, I think he's actually a good actor and people peg him as just like the action star. And that's Sylvester Stallone, actually. Yeah. I, I mean, if you watch yeah. the original Rambo yep. uh, and compare that to, say, Rocky. I mean, yep. you know, they're both tough guy characters, but they're both extremely different. One's like a war-scarred Vietnam veteran. The other guy is just like a down-on-his-luck guy who's who's optimistic. Yeah. Not the smartest, but... <laughs> well, have you guys ever seen Copland? Uh, no, I haven't mm. seen that one. Nope. I know, okay, what, that's I know a, what you're talking about, but I, I know I haven't seen Yeah, it. that's the one that I um, I realized that I totally had Sylvester Stallone pegged wrong because he plays like a sheriff of like a small town that's like basically New York uh, cops all live there and they just like traffic or they commute to the to New York to do work and then come to this like small little town to 
uh, live, right? But it's like, obviously, there's some corruption, like all that kind of stuff. And nobody takes him seriously because he's um, deaf in one year from like an accident that he had when he was saving a girl from like dying. And so nobody takes him seriously because he's like, not like all there, I guess. But like, it was crazy watching it because I was like, holy crap. I'm like, Stallone actually can do more than just like the tough action guy. He can do the soft guy. He can do that kind of stuff, right? So it's like I was I was thoroughly blown away, and I was like, you know what? I totally pegged him wrong. So, yeah. and I think a lot of people do that too. Yep. Do you know he sold his dog to write uh, Rocky? Did you know he went back to that liquor store after he made the money and waited for four days for that guy to come back and get by and dog to get back. his get his dog back? You know how he got his dog back? How was it? Oh. He paid... Please tell me it was through a boxing match. No. No. Was the dog it would a been boxer? Good. But because he got, he asked the guy, he's like, yo, like I sold you my dog. I have money now. Like I want to buy him back. And the guy was like, I'm not giving you this dog. Like he's mine now. And they bartered to the point where <laughs> he actually gave him, I think it was over 80% of the earnings that he got from Rocky. Like for them buying the script, I think he paid him something around the line of like, thirty thousand dollars and a small role in rocky to get that dog back yep that's dedication (laughs) the studios absolutely did not want stallone either for no rocky no like his like i guess like his like coming like to be like this the actor that he is now like story is just insane yeah like the stuff he had to go through was just incredible like he he tried to get us a role in the godfather and they told him that he wasn't Italian enough. <laughs> well, or suddenly he's still on podcast. Mind. I wonder there. how you measure something like that. Yeah, I don't know, but like he was supposed to, like he was just looking for like an extra role, well, he like did, or like he just did like play a, the yeah. Italian stallion in an adult film, though. Yeah, yeah, that that was pre Rocky. <laughs> yeah, I think. But like, yeah, because he I'm was not, like in a. Up. Yeah, yeah, you gotta pay yeah. the bills, man. Yeah. You gotta pay the bills. It's all good. Yeah, but the yeah, it was crazy though, because it's like he refused to get any other work because he believed that like, if he he knew that if he was hungry enough that he would like get it, and um, he wrote Rocky in three days just like longhand, like he just wrote it, yeah, like on a notepad, and that's it. And then when he brought it to like the producers and stuff, they're like, "We like this, um, we want to pay you for it." He's like, "Okay, cool, but I have a condition, like I need to star in it." And they all they all kind of laughed at him. They were like, "There's no way that we're gonna put a no name on this." Yeah. And then he did it anyways, and then everybody realized, oh, we uh, we messed up. <laughs> okay. But, um, so, yeah. yeah, I guess that was the actor highlights. Anyone, yep. anyone else? It, no? Mm-hmm. All right. So we have a final segment. Brand new. Brand new. Hot off the presses. So that's a sure. thing. <laughs> that's a thing. So that's a thing. That's a thing. Yeah. So we each found some weird stuff on the internet to yep. talk about. Chris, you want to kick things off? Sure. I wouldn't say this is weird. I'd say it's more amazing. But it's a it's a sport. Yeah. It's a tag. At the yeah. pro- at the professional level. Professional tag. World Chase Tag. Nice. There, there's definitely elements of a parkour in there. Like these guys are climbing. Basically, okay. It's <laughs> how do I explain this? <laughs> Basically, like a sandbox with a jungle gym in the middle. You got one person chasing, one person running. That's about it. Yep. Super. It's just it's just rapid fire. Like just bang, bang, bang. You got twenty nice. seconds to catch the other person. Uh, yeah. Super entertaining. I imagine you have to be like super athletic to do that. Oh, oh my yeah. god! Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You got to be a parkour like kind of person. Yeah. I guess one of the one of the guys is like a Cirque du Soleil performer. Wow. So that that kind what? of like you got to be physically uh, adept. Um, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yep. Yeah, so uh, if you want to watch, like, just people chase each other down in a very high-paced or uh, high-speed environment, what, what? check out World Chase Tag. World Chase Tag. They're doing the – they're in their quarterfinals right now Yep. in Vegas. They just, uh, had a match yesterday. What did, what did they win? Like, what – is it just bragging rights or do you get, like, an actual well, – They probably get money yeah. or something. But That's crazy. Team Apex is looking pretty good this year. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Chris has got a team already. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I no, but it. seriously, it's tag on steroids and parkour. Nice. And that it's, sounds like it's amazing. It 
yeah, watch it for five minutes. You'll be you'll be sucked. You'll be trapped. <laughs> you, In a good way. You, yeah. That's kind of cool. That's a thing now, though. Like all oh, of these fantastic. crazy sports coming up and how people are like getting into it. Vegas, baby. Like, yeah. Could you imagine, like, hey, like you ask your kid, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, I want to play extreme tag and be an at- like do that. <laughs> yeah. Any kid. Like, what? Yeah. We have we have one club in Canada. In oh, do we? Yeah, it's in Timmins, Ontario, for some reason. Wow. wow. Okay. <laughs> I, I would. No, I, I no mean, shade towards Timmins. Yeah, I, was, I mean it's like a home of Shania Twain. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and tag. No, it's just it's it's crazy that it's, it's not like a that. like a city based thing. Because, like, Timmins isn't that. Yeah. I, I could see, like, it being right. in Victoria or something like that. But yeah, or Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. Montreal. But, yeah. no, no, Timmins. Timmins is a. Timmins is the hot spot getting for in Tokyo in, Canada. Getting in early, I guess. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, if you're in the Timmins area and you want to run around and jump off stuff and play tag. Play tag. That's the spot You're set go. up. Yeah. You're That's good. I, th- I think we should start one. <laughs> I'm down. We should start a club. I'm so down. Uh, I can provide color commentary. Yeah, we just got to, like... Boom! Yeah. Okay. Do it. So, uh, Chat TV World Chase Tag Team coming up. <laughs> coming at you. <laughs> yeah. Watch out. Colombia, Australia, Japan, Europe. You know what we should do? Because we're, where we live, we throw in chainsaws. <laughs> 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 There's a chainsaw carving portion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It's appropriate. Which also... Which is like speaking of sports, like that's also a crazy thing too that people do. It's like extreme chainsaw yeah, and like stuff like that. Like juggling chainsaws and stuff. Yeah, yeah like what? Well, even, You're not... even chainsaw carving. <laughs> yeah, no, it's they're crazy. Thing, yeah. yeah. Um, if you've never been to Chetwind, uh, just Google Chetwind chainsaw. Yeah. You'll get you'll get some hits. Yeah, yep. for sure. Pretty impressive stuff. It is. It's pretty nuts. And uh, yeah, it's fun to watch too when it's going on, but yeah, it's not right now because of. The world. Yeah, uh, don't say don't say <laughs> the c word. <laughs> say the it. world. Um, mine is also a a sport. <laughs> it's it's not very athletic or anything though. People like online are watching marble races. Love it. They're watching like there's there's marble leagues. They have teams which are sorted by color. <laughs> well, is is there like weight classes? Because you got the normal size and then you got the jumbo. I, I don't know if they got weight classes, but they, they do have them broken down by like different marble types and stuff. Yes. Like people will like... Like cat's eye? Yeah. Like there, there's like a cat's eye team. People <laughs> will make like crazy little ramps and stuff on their, their yard and stuff and like at least 20 marbles and they'll have like a ticker up at the side to show which marbles in what place and how far behind the leader are. It's like extreme Plinko. <laughs> Pretty much. I love that. Yeah. That's so cool. But, yeah, I, I found out about it because last year, like, when everything was shut down, and like, including professional sports, sports people really love sports. So they were <laughs> yes. kind of desperate for anything. So apparently marble races became <laughs> the go-to thing for some people. Yeah, I think I'm athletic enough to excel at that sport. At marble races, yeah. yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We just, we just Uh-oh. lost Rachel. Oh. And we're back. Uh, Rachel got so excited about mar- mar- marbles, she just left. I got so and stoked. The, it just, I, I, I couldn't handle myself. Built the marble myself. course and a, and a tag course in her backyard while we were gone. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so uh, anybody in Alberta that wants to do tag, let me know. <laughs> yep. But yeah, uh, it's on YouTube. Marble, yeah. mar- prof- like it's not professional, mar- but there are marble leagues out there. That's incredible. Yep. I love that. I don't even know where to buy marbles. A uh, dollar store? Yeah. A toy store? Uh, yeah, if you went to like a dollar store or a toy store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't yeah. been marble shopping in a long time. So. No, I, <laughs> I haven't either. It's like, when, when was the last time you bought Jax? <laughs> I never wow. did. I, I still don't understand Jax. You bounce the ball and you got to pick up stuff? Yeah, I, I don't get it. You're just... The ball was bouncing. Like, that was, that was, that was the fun. big thing. Yeah. 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 I, I usually just played with the ball. I just... I didn't I think so. mess with the jacks. Did you ever step on those? <laughs> yeah, those were like oh. Keltrops. Oh. <laughs> those were like, I would put that like in the top three things. Like uh, up there with Lego. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Lego God, sucks. No. There you go. Topic for next week. <laughs> things that suck to step on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I can think of 10 right now. <laughs> Build your own Kevin McAllister uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. trap. <laughs> 
Oh boy. There's, there's another mo- or movie that would make a wicked horror movie. I was thinking about bringing that up, but yeah. the internet pretty much already did that. I, I think so. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, Rachel, you got anything strange or different from the internet you want to bring up? My God, yes. So <laughs> this is a sport, and it's been happening since 1227. Okay. So very old. And literally, all you do is uh, you get your stupidest and ugliest face on, and people vote vote on whether or not it's the worst or ugliest face, and then you win. <laughs> so you just make faces at your opponent, and uh, whoever has the worst face wins. Can you can you use your hands? No, you, it's only so just only face your muscles. Face. It's only just face. face it's uh, it's called world gurning. Okay. Huh. And, uh, yeah, you can do it in uh, the U.K. Uh, there's actually holiday packages <laughs> okay. based, oh. based around that. So if you want to go check that go, out. Go on uh, a cruise for the British Isles and then try to be the ugliest person in the British Isles, which I think basically, would be pretty difficult. Well, the thing, <laughs> like, the only thing that I could think of is, like, you know how, like, yeah, like when you're younger, your mom's always like, don't, like, keep your face like that. Like, it'll stick. Yeah. <laughs> right? So it's like they're basically just doing that, but, like, high stakes. I hope, like I hope they're crazy. doing it during winter. Yeah. Oh, Had that'd the, be cold. Uh, extra element of danger. Yeah. What if your face Those does spikes. stay like that? Okay, so the ultimate yeah. sport would be a tag match where you have to make the ugliest face and erase marbles. Or a tag match where there's marbles all over the ground. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's probably a death sentence. Yeah. Someone's going to break yeah, their neck. Yeah, that's like a break up broken ankle. Speaking of which, like they literally did like a floors lava television show. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> like ever like when you're a kid just like try to move Oh of course, yeah. Without every, touching the yeah. floor. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think everyone did. Yeah, they, they actually made a television show. Oh my god, show, yeah. Right? Yep. It's, it's genius. <laughs> well, uh if nobody's got anything else. I, I think we're actually a little bit longish for this. Yeah, week. we went a little long. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what uh, happens. I mean, we can keep going to an hour and a half, but I think we're out of stuff to say. I, I think we are. <laughs> it's Saturday morning, keep in mind. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for watching. For Media Minute, I'm Michael Forward. <laughs> Sorry, I'm burping. And I barely remember my name. See you next time.